Sage mode. It's a word we hear a lot in Naruto. And what's odd to me is that there's still a lot of confusion about how we enhance it, how we activate it, how we perfect it, who can use it and why they can use it. The working knowledge that most people have of Sage mode is that, you know, you sit with your hands in a circle for a little bit and then boom, you get circles around your eyes. And also if your shadow clones do that, then they disappear, boom, chakra boost. And while neither of those things are incorrect, it's not really a deep dive into what is one of the more complex power systems in the entirety of Naruto. But that's what I'm here for. You know what you're here for besides looking cute, liking this video, subscribing to the page and hitting that noti bell. So let's answer the easy question what is sage mode sage mode is a powered up state that you achieve by blending nature's chakra with your own this new blend of chakra is known as senjutsu chakra this is one of the first misconceptions about sage mode people believe that you take in senjutsu chakra but you actually have to make your own once this senjutsu chakra is flowing through your veins you have access to new techniques or even just powering up old ones but just being able to take in nature chakra isn't enough there's many steps that take place after that in fact there's three very important steps before you can even begin to think about pulling in nature chakra you yourself have to have massively high chakra levels think about who we've seen as sages hashirama jiraiya naruto all well known for their massive amounts of chakra this is because you need to be able to blend a ratio of natural chakra with your own and in that ratio the natural energy should be the smaller bit therefore you have to have an enormously large reserve of chakra to blend with that nature chakra at a higher ratio people who can do this with their massive stores of chakra can achieve perfect sage mode think of it a bit like a tailed beast bomb how you have to control black and white chakra in a perfect eight to two ratio to make a tail beast bomb creating senjutsu is very similar to that and people who have less chakra or may not be able to blend that chakra in the perfect ratio will be imperfect sages and take on nature like appearances like jiraiya jiraiya's inability to blend senjutsu perfectly gave him toad like appearance because his nature energy in the mixture was too hot so you need to have incredibly high chakra reserves and you need to know how to blend that chakra perfectly what's the last requirement it's one of the easiest and yet one of the hardest requirements to activate sage mode your body has to be physically strong enough to take the power up that comes along with sage mode orochimaru is a perfect example of this kind of exception he's a genius at molding chakra he has incredibly high chakra levels but his body is not physically strong because of this when he found ryuchi cave and actually figured out how to perfectly mold senjusu chakra he wasn't able to achieve snake sage mode because his body wasn't strong enough for the power up and since mitsuki is actually a clone of orochimaru that's why when mitsuki activates his snake sage mode it destroys his body this is why orochimaru tells him you need to get stronger before you can use full-on snake sage mode but let's say you have all of those boxes checked you're strong you have tons of chakra and you're really good at molding things congratulations you get to sit still for a year i say that because we're now gonna talk about how you learn how to activate sage mode which by the way is insanely dangerous essentially when you found whatever talking animal wants to teach you this insane power up be that the toads of mount muabuko or the snakes of ryuchi cave or possibly even the slugs of shikatsu forest if you're curious about that little tidbit of information go ahead nope wrong side check out this video about whether or not hashirama's a slug sage i've only been on youtube for three months no way i've figured out which way to point yet or anything regardless of which animal you found they're gonna have you sit still and that's because you have to sit completely still in order to sense the nature chakra around you and pull it inside of you and once you begin to pull in this nature spiritual energy you have to mix it with your own physical energy at that perfect ratio we talked about if you don't mix in enough nature energy nothing will happen but if you mix in too much your body will turn to stone 
forever. Well, technically that's only true about the toads, about Muabuko. If you pull in too much of their nature energy, you turn into a stone. But if you do it with other animals, like, you know, the snakes of Ryuji Cave, your body begins to take on a snake-like appearance permanently. Look at Kabuto. And while this does sound terrifying, right? I don't want to be a snake person or a statue. There is ways to learn it that have made it a bit easier. And while these ways are kind of specific to the toads, because, you know, snakes aren't that nice they still exist and that's what's important there's two kind of tools that the toads use in order to make people learning sage mode a bit easier there's the oil that they apply to the learner's skin that naturally pulls in nature energy without them doing anything by applying this oil onto your arm your arm would begin to passively pull in nature energy only problem with this oil though is that it evaporates the second you leave mount muabuko why i don't i don't know would have been helpful in the war arc, but i guess you know you gotta have that patent and outside of that they also have a staff that when they hit you with it it will literally shoot all of the nature energy out of your body so let's say you're doing your best impersonation of the thing from the fantastic four and turning into a rock they just hit you with the staff and then boom all your nature energy gone which like also would have been nice in the war arc madara was a sage i guess i kind of lied earlier when i said that the snakes don't have a tool to help people learn sage mode they do it's just awful in order to learn snake sage mode you have to be bitten by the great white snake sage and then the great white snake sage will inject snake nature energy into you and if your body is strong enough to accept it you're good which is nice i mean that's a nice little quick way to learn you know one little shot of fangs and you're good but if your body's not strong enough the snake will eat you so just just make sure you do some curls before you go. I don't know. Okay, so you're not a stone or you've been bitten by the snake sage or you did whatever Hashirama did to train under the slugs. Now you got sage mode. That's awesome. Congratulations. You have hacks. But what are your hacks? Great question. You now have increased strength, speed, stamina, reflexes, durability, and perception. Your ninjutsu is more powerful. Look at Naruto's Sage Mode Rasen Shuriken or Hashirama's Thousand Arm Kanon. Your Taijutsu is more powerful. Look at Naruto's Froggy Kumite or Jiraiya's ability to box with members of pain. Your Genjutsu is more powerful. Look at Jiraiya's Demonic Illusion Toad Confrontation Chant. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, you can now manipulate the nature energy around you. Remember when I mentioned Froggy Kumite? The ability that Naruto has to increase the range of his punches and his kicks by applying nature energy to the end of them? Think of it like a chakra blade. You know how Asuma is able to increase the size of this blade by applying chakra to it? Naruto can essentially do that with his hands. And that applies to anyone who has learned Sage Mode from Mount Muabuko the toads but if you learned your sage mode from the snakes in ryuchi cave you can do something even crazier people who have acquired sage mode from ryuchi cave in the snakes can breathe life into inorganic substances and then control those substances by inorganic we mean things that have no particular life function like steel or dirt or rocks we saw this when kabuto used it against itachi in that cave it's called sage arc inorganic reincarnation oh and let's say you weren't born in uchiha so you didn't get a sharingan shucks but if you got a sage mode you can sense the things around you and predict attacks this is accomplished by sensing the chakra around you and identifying where it is or where it's going to go oh and let's say you're up against somebody who can suck out chakra if you have senjutsu chakra in you and they don't have sage mode mastered well they're gonna be a statue pretty soon. The only real disadvantages to sage mode are that you have to be entirely still while collecting the nature chakra to make senjutsu chakra. And that because you can't stay entirely still while fighting, that this mode has a timer. Obviously, Naruto has extended said timer by having shadow clones collect nature chakra, make senjutsu chakra, and then when they disappear, that chakra goes to him. Naruto can only do this with five shadow clones because if he had more, it would distract the shadow clones and they wouldn't be able to perfectly mold that chakra. So even Naruto technically has a timer on how long he can use sage mode. And he's not the only person who can bypass this kind of massive disadvantage that comes along with sage mode. Both Kabuto and Jiraiya have ways around it. Jiraiya uses sage art amphibian technique, 
which summons one or two toads that fuse to the user's shoulder. These toads, Ma and Pop in Jiraiya's case, will then pull in Nature Chakra and make it Senjutsu Chakra, and then because they are fused, pass that into Jiraiya's chakra network. Kabuto's is a bit more complicated. For that, we're gonna have to talk about Jugo. Jugo comes from the clan whose name we do not know, but they possess a Keke Genkai that allows them to passively pull in Nature Chakra at all times. This comes with the massive advantage of just never being out of chakra, but the massive disadvantage of sometimes flying into huge bloodthirsty rages. This ability is insanely powerful and highly coveted, so much so that Orochimaru used Jugo's DNA to create the curse mark, and Kabuto used it by assimilating part of Jugo's DNA with himself in order to awaken this Keke Genkai to allow himself to constantly be pulling in nature energy and then mold that into Senjutsu. So yeah, he doesn't have to sit still either. Oh, and I forgot, there's also technically a third hack, but you have to be a perfect Chinchuriki. Essentially by teaching your tail beast how to pull in nature chakra and create it into Senjutsu chakra, you can massively shorten the time it takes to refill all of your Senjutsu chakra. This is why, you know, sometimes we see Karama doing this as well. And since we're talking about Jinchurikis and Sage Mode and all of that, let's talk about Naruto's final hack outside of Baryon Mode. And that would be Tailed Beast Sage Mode. By essentially combining what is Tailed Beast Mode, you know, KCM, with Sage Mode, Naruto created Tailed Beast Sage Mode. Well, I guess you could say that maybe Minato made it first. We don't really know. We don't know why Minato had it in the first place. It's the biggest ass pull in the history of Naruto. Oh, I'm not good at the Sage Mode transformation. Is a perfect Sage. So I forget that he ripped Kurama in half, took the good part with him, and was supposed to be fighting him for eternity in limbo because that's how Death Reaper Seal works. And yet they just come back best of friends regardless minato and naruto in this state are able to add senjutsu chakra to things like tail beast bombs or rasen shurikens and naruto became so proficient in it that two years after the war i mean obviously he used it in the war to stand toe to toe with the likes of you know jubidara or jubito but two years after the war he learned how to a fly with it and B, apply Senjutsu Chakra to Tailed Beast Bombs or even just his fists in Shattered Truth Seeker Orbs. This is all done in his fight against Honerio Totsuki. Why this is important is because Senjutsu Chakra is the only thing that can defeat a Keke Mora. A Keke Mora being the combination of all five chakra releases, yin and yang, and it is specific to descendants of Kaguya and Kaguya herself. The ones we know are the most obvious, True Seeker Orbs, the Sword of Nunabuko, and Ash All Killing Bone. Without Senjutsu at a very, very high level, Keke Mora would be able to take over the entire world. Oh, and since we're talking about descendants of Kaguya, how could I forget? There's also Sage of Six Paths mode or six paths sage mode, which I explain and go into depth about in this video right about here. But in kind of summation is a mode passed down to Naruto by Hagoromo Otsutsuki. This mode is essentially something that Naruto can tap into that increases his power, durability, reflexes, all of the things that sage mode does, but to the second power. It's gifted to Naruto or other people who have an iron will and the guts to never give up. And it works a bit like Sage Mode, except for the fact that you don't pull in energy to refill it. It's just kind of a battery that once you use, it has to recharge naturally. And that's it. That's Sage Mode 101, baby. Now you know as much as me. If you appreciate the anime lesson, please do something that I appreciate and like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell because it's, it's about give and take. Listen, I love to think that I could just nail Sage Mode. I don't think I could sit still for that long.